strange. Maybe not exactly a cult, but definitely sinister forces, my friends. Catholics Christmas communion came with hepatitis A. Health warning affecting anyone who took communion at Our Lady of Lords Church in Massapequa Park, Long Island. I would news reporter Jim Dolan is there tonight with our lead story. Jim. Well, it's during communion at a Catholic mass. They hand out a small wafer of bread called a host, and they literally hand it out. They take it out of the ciborium and put it directly into your mouth or into your hands, and you put it into your mouth. Well, someone who handled a whole lot of the hosts here at this church on Christmas Day was later diagnosed with hepatitis A, and now the health department is involved, and they want anybody who received communion at either of those two masses to get vaccinated. At Mass tonight, the priest consecrated the bread Catholics call the host and raised it high, proclaiming it the body of Jesus Christ. But the host's people received on Christmas Day at two Masses at Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Long Island may have been contaminated. Certainly, if I I even suspected I had hepatitis or something, you know, more serious than common cold, I would, I'd be so afraid of passing it on. I mean, it's just... You know, common sense, common courtesy. But an alert issued by the Nassau County Health Department today suggests someone definitely wasn't being cautious. And that left some potentially exposed to hepatitis A. Individuals may be at risk if they received communion during the 1030 or noon masses on December 25th, according to the memo. We actually think it's highly unlikely that anybody would would contract the disease from this exposure. At the same time, this is a disease that we can prevent. So we want to make sure that we take the measures to protect people. I tell the truth, I'm not over concerned about it, you know. And that's how most people at Mass tonight felt. I just think it's something that we need to be concerned about and be more cautious about. But I think we Hepatitis A symptoms include an abrupt onset of fever, fatigue, nausea, and stomach pain, but it may take another week or more to see any symptoms. The vaccination will prevent them. We are in the window where vaccination will prevent any case from developing. (laughs) There's no time to take that on. Further down our holy hexes, killer psalm, Bible verse deemed as threat on Obama's life. That's from World Net Daily. Romanian witches using spells to protest new taxes. And lastly, you gotta love this. IHOP restaurant chain drops lawsuit against the IHOP church. Waffles and Jesus together at last. Our interesting selection of media memes. You probably heard the story about homeless Ted Williams and his turnaround. CNN covering the faith-based angle of what caused the reporter to video the homeless guy who had the amazing voice and who's now been turned into probably a 15-minute superstar. Here's good news. Music industry on life support. More on this from Big Hollywood. The really interesting part, as again, we, in a way, celebrate the crumbling dinosaur formats and forms. But what boomed in 2010 vinyl records even better than that the vast majority of the people who bought vinyl bought them from independent record stores but back to the bad former covert cia agent charged with leaking secrets to a newspaper that's from christian science monitor in a few obituary notes pete postlethwaite a british actor I know him from usual suspects dies at the age of 64 and per oscarson One of the stars of the Swedish Millennium Trilogy, that would be The Girl Who, dot, 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 trilogy, dead after a house fire. And an interesting note I just saw a few hours ago on CNN, investigation into the death of Notorious B.I.G. heats up. That video is there and the article is there getting into what's prompting them to to move on new leads on a now 13-year-old case. And, of course, it connects to Tupac. And I have to say that the film Biggie and Tupac by Nick Broomfield, the guy who made Kurt and Courtney, has a lot of good information in it and interesting questions to be asked. But we must keep moving, and unfortunately it's to the murder and mayhem 
We had our first school shooting of 2011. It happened in Omaha, Nebraska, where the vice principal was killed by... The shooter turned out to be the son of a police detective. And of course, our own Portland police rang in the new year by shooting another person when a taser or a tackle probably could have done the job, but that's how they roll here in Portland. But back in the District of Criminals, man attacked by kids at the L'Enfant Metro stop in the District of Criminals. Meanwhile, bystanders watch and film it as if they had been tipped off in some kind of flash mob kind of way. And another suspicious death. The ex says the woman who died at the Bush home had a heart issue. And as I've said so many times, these stories and headlines probably just act as a way to hopefully whet your appetite to go do more investigation. All of these stories warrant more investigation. But now we're to Obama Saya. Anti-Obama heckler disrupts the reading of the U.S. Constitution when they got to the part about what it takes to be president. They shouted, accept Obama. The birther meme rising again. We reported to you on the B-Side 199 episode. Chris Matthews and even Hawaii officials pushing for more disclosure on the birther issue before it blows up in the Democrats' face. But maybe that's why he's bringing all the gangster cronies in and we see the, the uh, birdcage liner being changed. As we joke many, many times here in the last several years of the show, we've seen many frontman, mouthpiece, press secretary come and go, and now it's Robert, Gr- Robert Gibbs' turn to leave the Obama White House where he says he can do so much more for him outside the White House. And we know that Rahm Emanuel is trying to elbow his way into becoming a mayor of Chicagoland. Meanwhile, Obama picks William Daly as his new chief of staff. Yes, the seventh son of the Daly empire. Gangsterism, pure and true. So he's going to come on as the new chief of staff, but he's going to have to, you know, step down from his VP position at J.P. Morgan. We mentioned, what was the name, Sperling, that we hit at the top of the show. Washington's blog breaking down Obama appointing all more ultimate Wall Street insiders to top posts yet again. But we move now to our Police State International notes, where another piece from Paul Joseph Watson asked the question on New Year's Eve, will it be a happy new year for resistance against the New World Order? But not with stories like this. You can call them integrated platforms. But we know they're mobile prison guard towers coming soon to Walmart. More on that from freedomsphoenix.com. Big Sis Napolitano gets air security tips in Israel. Guerrero, Mexico, and of course that means warrior, Mexico. They started off their new year with 10 murders, including the death of a diplomat and his family. The Miami-Dade police are going to be buying drones so they can keep an eye on Scarface. Meanwhile, Utah's $1.5 billion cybersecurity center groundbreaking breaking underway to be completed October 2013. We're holding our breath. Meanwhile, ratcheting up the fear, but always to be ready.gov. 20 government tips for surviving a nuclear attack. Meanwhile, Brooklyn Bus Depot terror scare over mysterious filming of gas tanks. Capitol Hill evacuated due to unauthorized aircraft. That goes back to New Year's Day. But we'll end... Not exactly. It just gets stranger and stranger and... I try not to laugh through these things. I know some folks say on New World Next Week, why is that guy always smiling? Coffee spill diverts United Airlines flight onto the controls. Meanwhile, a Florida professor was arrested for having a suspicious bagel on the plane. More on that from NBC Miami. 
Nothing like a coffee spill and a suspicious bagel, my friends, in the New World Order. Our last police state note, I've not seen any big updates on, and we just have it as a breaking news blip. Packages explode in two Maryland state buildings. This happened yesterday, January 6th. One, I believe, was addressed to the governor, and one person was injured. The packages never made it made it to the governor's. But what's this going to be? Keeping in mind the fresh events from Portland to Baltimore of FBI provocateur patsies. This doesn't exactly seem to be following the MO, though. But we always have to ask that question. The end of this news purge. Canary in a coal mine ends with war whores. Over 10,000 died in Afghan violence in 2010. Meanwhile, the U.S. is sending 1,400 more Marines to Afghanistan. More on that from the French agency press. With the Air Force's new drone, they say, quote, we can see everything. Meanwhile, too big to fail, Lockheed Martin's got their fingers everywhere. We can see everything. We've got our fingers everywhere. White House picks special ops chief, furthering the death and destruction and the murder and the mayhem and the meat grinder in Afghan Iraq and other wars of aggression based on lies and false flag provocateur events that have been used throughout history. Like Sun Tzu said, all war is based on deception. And our last war horror note is bizarre. Glenn Close, the actress, says the use of her image in a Navy video was insulting. Apparently, she was on a ship. They got her to shoot some video. It looks silly when it's out of context, I believe. And I don't think we've seen any of this video, but... I think they spliced it in with other racier material and their own sketches and SNL garbage, and it's all...